Now we're going to have a Q&A session about stats with Mark and Ben. Please try to keep your questions uh, directly related to statistics uh, so we can make sure that everyone gets a chance to ask the question that they are dying to know. So here we are with our Q&A. Hey, I guess uh, we're back on camera. So just like uh, the last time, we're going to keep uh, talking until we hear one of you guys actually say, hey, yeah, we can hear you, Mark. And once we do that, we'll start taking some questions. So uh, as per all the other presentations, uh, the only questions we will take right now have to do with the stat system. So if you've got other questions, um, uh, please save them for another presentation. This one is just focused on stats. Okay, so we are on, Benjamin. So, uh, why well, don't uh, I'm going to go start picking questions and uh, maybe I'll make Ben answer them. What do you guys think? <laughs> All for Ben? This way I can like let my, let my voice recover. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with a good one right here, Algorand. When they say that some stats are only going to be interesting for one or two classes, what are some of the principles involved? That, um, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that. So having stats that are universally applicable, like Vitality, everyone's going to need some help. Uh, that is kind of a vertical progression concept. It's more of a, if you gain this, you get better. Uh, but it doesn't provide any differentiation. So if you have one character that likes to have like the faith versus attunement that we talked about, a faith-based character who wants to get faith and an attunement-based character who wants to get attunement means that those characters diverge in different directions. And the things that you can gain through attunement, the types of different elements, the types of different magic you can do with attunement-based magic are different than the types of things you can do with a faith-based magic character. So if you have one character that could access either of those routes, making that choice means that those characters are going to be different from one another, one that chooses one, one that chooses the other. Okay. Uh, how do you roll your starting stats and how can you increase them? I'll take that one. Um, well, right now you're going to start with a stat allocation system where you're going to get a certain number of points and you can allocate them however you want. Um, how are you going to increase them? It's usage you level that. Usage based. Wow, it's like, you know, 230, I'm already flubbing. Um, so if you want your strength to go up, do things that actually require strength. If you're a warrior type, well, you know, swinging your weapon would have something to do with it. So would wearing heavy armor for a while, quite frankly. So, you know, those are really the two focuses, stat allocation in the beginning, usage-based uh, leveling after that. And to answer a question that I'm sure is going to be asked, uh, especially by people who aren't our backers already, um, Soft cap on stats. You know, we're not hard capping stat advancement, but it will be a soft cap. And of course, like most good soft caps, it'll start off easy and it will get harder and harder and harder. So next question uh, from Triadelian. Did you read my mind on the perfect stat system? How seriously, you're amazing. But will there be a limit between stats? So for example, a limit in strength depending on other related stats. Well, that's a, you know, I hadn't even thought about that. You know, that, you know, maybe your maximum strength could be limited by your maximum, or not even maximum, because it's soft, you know, soft cap, by your, you know, any other stat, you know, you can use, you know, uh, you know, con in, in the old school, you know, D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Yeah, we've talked a very little bit about this, about uh, the decay thing that we've mentioned just very briefly because we haven't really gotten into the, the details of that side of the system yet, but that there's going to be some method of making sure that you can't just max everything. Exactly. Exactly, but that's in because you're going to start with a certain number of points. I think his question was a little different of saying, well, if you're raising your, you know, again, your con, um, you know, Will that, could that affect your strength? So I thought that was different. I mean, obviously during stat allocation, you're gonna have a set pool, yeah. whatever that pool is. But moving past that and but moving the past actual progression. Exactly, yeah. that's what I thought was really interesting. 
So uh, Foggy, uh, Fog Eye, Foggy. Are stats that are assigned during character creation going to matter later on in the game or just give you a head start? Um, I'll get this one. Um, of course they're going to matter later on. Otherwise, it would be a waste of your time. Um, however, what we also have said is that we don't want your choices in the beginning to be so bad. Unless you really, I mean, you'd have to try to make the most awesomely horrible character you possibly could, that, you know, what choices you made just gimp you so badly from the beginning. So, you know, stats are definitely going to matter. It's not like you're going to start with uh, 10 strength and your maximum strength is going to be 1,000. It's not going to be like that. Would it be that you started at 900 and your max was 1,000? No, it won't be that either. There'll be some balance, you know, somewhere in between the two where we want what you do in character creation to matter but not so much that you couldn't either overcome a mistake and you don't want to use, you know, we've talked about like one free respec. Um, so you couldn't overcome it or that, you know, you're such a disadvantage that, you know, you have no chance of succeeding. Uh, next. Let's see. Okay, well, weapon damage. This is from... Corpus Veridis. Uh Will weapon damage be more or less effective? Don, that just scrolled up. But I think the question was, will weapon damage, you know, be different uh, based on armor types and I think stats? Um, so getting into a little bit of the damage and such, uh, different types of armor will protect you against different types of damage and different types of weapons can deal more than one type of damage. Uh, when we get into magic, we'll talk a little bit about destruction damage versus normal damage. Um, but if you have, say, a sword, and your sword is primarily dealing uh, slashing damage with slashing attacks or piercing damage with thrusting attacks, uh, the way that you defend against that is having armor that protects against those specific types of damage. So damage types are definitely a thing. Uh, when we get into magic, obviously magic has a lot more types than just physical, but physical you're going to probably want to have a lot more resistance against than specific types of magic because specific types of magic are very narrow uh, versus physical, which is just a very few types, uh, slush, uh, slash, pierce, dress, uh, crush. And that will be uh, much higher resistance values will be very important for that since that will cover a much wider range of, of damage. Uh, from Dusty the Hamster, will stats be linked to physical appearance? Smaller, thinner characters carry less and are weaker. Um, actually, that's something that was in one of my documents. Uh, that, you know, if you want to choose to play a much, you know, larger character, that some of your stats, you know, are going to be different. I mean, if you want to be incredibly heavy, let us say, and, you know, also very short, could your running speed start off as worse? And the answer is yes. I mean, we want... You know, we want these choices to matter, guys. Uh, you know, we paid, uh, especially, you know, bef even before we thought of doing this game, you know, I spent a lot of time on forums and talking to people and listening to people. And, you know, look, we're making a game that we hope a lot of you have wanted for a while where, you know, your choices for stats are actually important. That it's not just a bunch of homogenized, hey, it doesn't matter really what you start with. And these stats really don't matter because all classes can do everything. And we're not going down, you know, that path at all. So, you know, hopefully now that you've heard part of the presentation, you know, the, today, of today's presentations and the weekly presentations, you'll get a better idea of how we, um, oh, intend to fulfill it. Ah... Uh... Hey, this doesn't really have to do with um, stats, but, you know, it's from a guy I haven't heard from in a bit. So, Smudge Pudge, will crafters be able to directly deal damage in combat? The answer is yes. Now, are they going to be any good at it? Uh, the answer is no. Um, look, if you want to be um, a crafter warrior, a uh, full-time crafter, it's not going to happen. Now, can you do things? Absolutely. Will you be helpful in combat? Absolutely. Uh, you know, will you want to venture out on your own, you know, against uh, the two other realms out there? You know, probably not. 
you know, you won't last very long. But we don't want you to just go out there and be able to do absolutely nothing. But don't expect to be able to go out there and, you know, be, hey, I'm full-time crafter guy, but I'm also, you know, warrior guy. Yeah. Not going to happen. I would say that their damage is just more abstracted. Like if you're building some traps and you're building yeah. some siege engines, yeah. you're doing a lot of damage, but you're not doing it with the sword. Yeah. Correct. Uh, let's see. Triggers 12. Will there be a cap on stats gained from items? Um, ben, you want to take this? Um, yeah, so there aren't really stats based on items. We've said, like, the example was boots don't give you strength. We don't allocate, like, your primary stats to items in that way. The stats that you gain from items are defensive stats. So uh, the amount of piercing resistance that you will have, that will be a stat on your items. And there isn't really a, a hard cap to that. There's a diminishing returns point to the amount of defense that you have versus the amount of offense that the opponent has. But there isn't really a, uh, a, a limitation on, on that that keeps you from uh, progressing further. Uh, just sorry, it says his question to go uh, scrolling off, but it's, um, you know, it's an important one. And that is, will you be able to see all these stats during character creation? So, you know, it's one thing to say choices matter. Um, and to put a burden on the players uh, to make the right choices. Um, if we don't, at the same time, also develop a character creation system and guides and documents that really allows you to see the impact of your choices, that is stupid. I mean, it would be really dumb of us to do that. Because, look, you know, that, that puts you guys in a vacuum. And that's not fair. You know, that's not old school. That's not hardcore. That's just, I don't know, lame. And, you know, we, we, we are going to give you guys all the info, you know, you need to make these choices. And, you know, when you have that info, if you choose to use it and you choose also to gimp yourself, go right ahead. I know there have been a lot of players, me included, who've at times liked playing gimp characters just to see how you can do. So, you know, that's going to be your choice. Now, we're going to warn you, of course. When, again, you will have not only the documents and guides, but there will also be, you know, hey, you know, this may not be the best, you know, build for your warrior class that you've chosen. But then again, it's up to you after that. So I think as long as we do our job, and that is not only designing a great system, but making sure that the players have the opportunity to learn everything that they need to do either before they come into the character creation system or during it, as long as we do that, we've done our jobs. And the rest is up to you. Oh, good one here. So, um, Christofori. How are you managing increasing stats while maintaining a focus on horizontal progression? You want this? Um, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, so the way in which we are putting together the game system as a whole is in a mostly horizontal way. That's not to say that it's entirely horizontal because that's... Hang on, hang on, hey, uh, by the time you hear this, please slow down the uh, scroll speed, Max. We're getting way too many questions. So uh, slow it down in the room, please. Okay. Um, so yeah, the general idea is that this is a RVR game. This is where players are going to be fighting other players. They're not going to be primarily fighting monsters that have a fixed static power level that doesn't change. And they need to be stronger and stronger so they can fight stronger and stronger monsters. Players' power level only matters relative to other players, which means there can't be too huge of a gap when we're creating this system. So stats aren't going to give you uh, an astronomical level of, you know, capability to equip weapons that deal tons more damage than somebody else. There will be a, a wide range, but it'll be a range in which there are trade-offs. So if you want the biggest, most damaging sword in the game, it's going to be slow because that's the trade-off that you make. If you want something that hits really, really fast and is very good at, you know, disrupting casters, it's going to not do very much actual damage. So there are trade-offs, and the trade-offs are what give you the horizontal progression as opposed to just things get better and better and better to a point where someone who's been playing the game for years is just so much more powerful that someone new coming into the game doesn't really have a chance. Yeah, because we're frankly, we're screwed.